Today's strategy plus action equals a massive network and becoming a world-class connector. It's time to think bigger and make bold moves to create the life and business you were meant for. We're here to give you the latest in marketing strategies and the confidence to put them into action. We bring you hardworking entrepreneurs starting from scratch and visionary leaders of cutting edge companies looking to scale. You have a front row seat as we guide these business owners to a path of massive growth through customized marketing approaches and creative sales initiatives. Welcome to Strategy and Action. Here are your hosts, Jason Croft and Jonathan King. Welcome to Strategy and Action. Jonathan, how's it going? Awesome, man. Awesome. Fantastic. Episode one, man, of, of Strategy and Action, of the of the new show. I'm excited to kick this thing off. Me too. It's it's been a long time coming, but it's it's been a fun journey, man, and, and just ready to put this out there. Absolutely. What what better guest than Raj Daniels? Um, you know, you've had the, the chance to, to meet with him, you know, through this episode that we did. Um, and he really exemplifies that topic of today's show, which is networking, really building a, you know, connecting with people and building that world class network, right? Um, yep. Something that you and I believe in so much. And I think from the, from the episode here, you, you know, that interview, you got to see um, some insights into, into Raj and how he operates in that way. Man, he's 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 an incredible global connector. You know, uh, it's it's having that vision of seeing opportunity and putting people together uh, with no expectation. That's that's that that's a big thing for him, and and one of the things I absolutely loved. You know, we had a chance to to really know, you know, what he's doing, not only in his background that, that leads up to being such a great connector, but really what he's doing right now with Nexus PMG. Hearing how uh, he's been able just to, to to see it and how he came into that role and, and how he's been able to grow the business by literally connecting people. So it's it, it was an incredible, incredible story. All right, everybody, let's get to it with Raj Daniels. <laughs> To keep my tradition going uh, regarding the first episode of every show I start, our guest today is Raj Daniels. Besides being a good omen at this point and keeping the street going, Raj is the perfect person to have on this inaugural episode for so many reasons. With strategy and action, Jonathan and I are looking to dig deep into what's working in the world of business, and very often that means digging into what's working and what isn't at a human level. That's the good stuff, you know, like what's making this company work or that consultant successful because of the strategies that are in place and the action that's been taken to execute on them. And Raj thrives in both of those areas. I've been the recipient of his guidance so many times over the years on which direction to take and then held accountable to make sure I follow through. And I personally know countless people who have benefited from that exact type of interaction with him. Raj is currently the Director of Strategic Partnerships and Sustainability Initiatives at Nexus PMG, a management and consulting firm focused on guiding lenders, developers, and owner teams through every phase of capital infrastructure projects. Their work, certainly, it's, it's impressive enough, but it's the caliber of organizations and the world-changing effects of their projects that truly make them stand out. As part of his role there, Raj has started the Bigger Than Us podcast. Nearing 100 episodes as we record this, he is talking to leaders at companies like Lyft and Kickstarter, as well as founders of global organizations changing the face of energy. Raj brings a perspective born from creating success in so many areas, from growing up running stores with his family in London to being a strategy consultant for numerous companies, investing in real estate, being the founder and CEO of a SaaS company built entirely around bringing people together offline, running a weekly blog, and now a published author of the book For You, From Me. Above all of those things is his role as a husband and a purposeful and intentional father of three girls. 
Raj is the epitome of strategy and action, deciding on a direction for his life and going toward it steadfastly, one day at a time, evaluating along the way and calmly pushing through any obstacle until he gets there. Please welcome Raj Daniels. Thank you, Jason, for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, so excited to, to, to jump in and, and get this show rolling. Um, and of course, as I mentioned in the intro there, uh, you're, you're the... You're, you're the good omen for, for first episodes. So you're back. <laughs> <laughs> and there's so much, there's so much I want to dive into here. Um, certainly at a, at, at a high level, I, I want to talk, you, you know, your experience, honestly, truly being that world class connector and, and a lot of it through the lens of, of what you're doing now, uh, with Nexus PMG. Appreciate it. Awesome. And I know Jason gave a quick dis description of Nexus PMG when he was introducing you, Raj. Uh, but I really want to understand what the company does and the real impact its clients are having on the world. Absolutely. So at our core, Nexus PMG is an engineering firm. But what most people don't know about infrastructure engineering is that just like in Jason, back in the startup days and the VC days, when you are building a large project, you need an investor and you need a developer. So we sit at the nexus of the investor and the developer. So we work with investors. So think of really large companies, Morgan Stanley, Blackstone Group, um, then some middle market that have several hundred million dollars under investment, under management, sorry, that are looking to invest in a project. So let's say it's a um, some kind of power project, a power plant. They will bring us in to do what we call engineering work, technical overview, and also in some cases do financial modeling for them. On the other side of the coin, there's the developer. So in the VC world, it's the entrepreneur who has the idea perhaps that, you know what, I want to build this particular power plant or I want to use these particular products to create another product. So we help the developer go through the initial stages of the engineering and in some cases help them through the entire process, the project process. Now, there's also been occasion where a developer will come to us and say, look, I have this idea for a project. I haven't been able to raise any money yet. Is there a way that you can create introductions? Because officially we're not FINRA registered. So we create introductions to some of the investors that we know to help them finance the project. And then we will oversee that project. So at our core, like I said, we're an engineering firm. But we sit right in the middle of that sweet spot, the nexus, if you will, between investors into large power projects. And then on the other side with the developers looking to build these projects and perhaps raise money too. And rather than being simply, you know, a business um, or, you know, a, an extension of a venture capital firm or anything like that, there's that engineering comes into play specifically because of the projects you're going after and being a part of. You have that expertise to play that middleman, if you will, extremely well, right? Ab ab absolutely. Uh, to answer your question directly, so we have an entire what we call engineering arm in South Carolina in Greenville, where we have about uh, 30 engineers that sit there and they do all the engineering work, the design work. I'm in the office in Dallas uh, where leadership sits over here and it's a lot of um, BD work, sales work. But to your point directly, we have a whole bench of engineers, team of engineers, if you will, that you know combined have several decades worth of experience. The leadership off Nexus PMG, the three gentlemen that started it were all working on multi-billion dollar projects about 10, 12 years ago in the, you know, consider it large scale infrastructures. So think power plants, nuclear plants, uh, large scale aluminum plants in Middle East. And so they ha have a very, very deep engineering background. And just to go back into a little bit of history of Nexus PMG. So they were sitting on this multi-billion dollar project in the Middle East. And they came together and said, look, we see a large hole in what we call the middle market segment. So perhaps projects that, that range in the several hundred million to perhaps a billion dollars. And so they created Nexus PMG to fill that particular hole that they saw in the market. So they brought their large company expertise, if you will, to the middle market. That's genius. I love that. It, it, give me a quick example, because I want to dive into to your role there that you've come in and, and helped fill, because that, that, that speaks um, to exactly the, the the real huge topic we're kind of talking about today, but also, you know, give me an example of 
like current projects if you can or something you've just completed um, there so people can kind of grab onto oh it's it's that size of <laughs> of an endeavor and and it's fact affecting people all over the world so i'll give you a, two examples of different kinds of projects one so we are experts in what we call waste to energy so there's a lot of waste products whether it's in agriculture or manufacturing that people don't realize can be essentially turned into some kind of fuel or natural gas. So one that might be fun for your kids, Jason, is that we do a lot of work with cow manure. We do pig <laughs> manure too, chicken, but let's say cow manure. So there are farmers right now who have you know several thousand head of cattle and they have to pay right now to have the manure taken away. Mm -hmm. So we have a project, we do several of these projects. I'm just gonna give you an example of what we do. There's a process called anaerobic digestion, where we collect the manure essentially, we put it through a digester, and out the other end comes a renewable natural gas. And that natural gas goes directly into the pipeline. And right now, that natural gas is being transported across the United States to different, different states that are using renewable natural gas, perhaps for transportation or other things. So that's one specifically in the waste field. Uh, another example is a project that we're doing in Arkansas where we're taking a tall, it's about a 10 foot perennial grass. So it's called Muscanthus grass. And we're taking this grass, if you will, and putting it through a thermoforming process. And out the other end comes a, like a chipotle bowl. So it's biodegradable, compostable bowl. And so that fi fits into what we call a closed loop or circular loop economy, where we're taking this natural grass, we're creating the bowl, the bowl gets used and the bowl gets back, goes back into the system. So it's a totally closed loop system. So just briefly, again, regarding Nexus, back in 2018, the leadership sat down and reevaluated the projects that they were doing. And in 2019, the company made a hard right turn pivot and said that we are only going to take projects in what we call low carbon, zero carbon initiative, projects that are good for the planet only. We are no longer, even though we have the expertise, we are no longer going to take any projects in what we call metals and mining and fossil fuels. And we're only going to concentrate on projects that are good for the environment and good for the world. That's phenomenal. I love that so Man, much. Yeah. And that's, that's the impact. I know, you know, Jonathan and I, um, similar to you, Raj, you know, we, we love connection. We love network. We love, you know, putting people together, ideas together, businesses together. And what I love about where you are and what you're doing with Nexus is what you just described, that absolute global reach. Like, you know, this is world changing stuff. Like this is, these are the things the, the planet needs and to be a part of that. I know, I know for you, that's a, a very big point of pride to say, you know, yeah, sure. I'm doing something I enjoy, but I'm, I'm making this world a better place and, and, and not an ounce of hyperbole in that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. You know, you and I go back six years now, 2014, when we first met. Yeah, you know, we met when I was launching OpenTime, my previous SaaS company. And you know how much my heart was in that company. And that, that entire company was based on bringing people together. I, I just find that you know, we as a society can do so much more if we get to know our neighbors better. And, mm. you know, we, we very quickly learn that we share very similar, large common denominators about what we want for ourselves and for our families from a broader point of view, from a global point of view. And so, you know, being at Nexus now, and again, I, you know, we, we jokingly say it's the Nexus at the midpoint, right? The connecting point of these different opportunities, you know, being able to bring people together to connect people is something that I, you know, it's part of my, my value system, my belief system. That's fantastic. And I know, and that's an, another thing I love about, you know, this show and the people we're bringing on and even Jonathan, your, you know, your um, place in the world right now. I love this global uh, reach for the show. Uh, you know, Jonathan, you're, the, you're there in Spain. You're seeing it as much. Yeah. Or as or, or more, the the need for all of this, course. right? Yeah, man, and 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 it's just incredible at at you know the difference between uh, things that happen and in, in my perspective from the states 
uh, just growing up there. And then the perspective from the European side and just seeing seeing the difference and seeing the opportunities. And there's so, so many things as far as just specifically with connection and, and business and just suggestions that I've been able uh, to, to bring to people here that are things in the United States that we've seen and are used to. And, uh, but in other countries, they have such a huge impact. Uh, I was recently speaking with a friend and he, he was in the States for three years, his wife, uh, was teaching and she was in a program and he ran across uh, uh, dot com secrets and and then built out a massive, massive uh, online program and, and an in-person conference series. And, and it's doing incredibly well uh, teaching people marketing secrets that we think would be, you know, would if you're growing up as a business person in in the states, it's like, hey, this is this is the first thing you do. And so, um, but connecting people and and him being able to discover, hey, here's a here's a quick secret, uh, and then spreading that out has has truly actually been able to change the lives of a lot of people uh, that he knew, and then people that he didn't know as well. So, Raj, you've got your own show there as director of strategic partnerships and sustainability initiatives uh, there at is your official title. Um, I know a big thing um, that you've got there is your own podcast, the bigger than us podcast. Um, what was the, I mean, you're coming up on a hundred episodes there. Tell me some of the results of that and uh, you know, why, why start that? That was one of the first things that you did. So really good questions. Let's go back to why start that. You know, I officially joined Nexus last year, 2019 May, and I my first engagement with Nexus was as a consultant for them. And within the three months of consulting for them, I fell in love with the work they were doing, just amazing work. And I felt like the story wasn't being told enough. So that's one part of the equation. The other part is in my three months there, I got to speak to some of their partners, some of the companies they were involved in. And I kept hearing these stories over and over again of individuals, entrepreneurs, companies, just doing phenomenal work, just out there, you know, trying to make the world better. And Nexus was, was going through an entire rebrand. Um, you know, our website says, we help you build a better world now, which was part of that rebrand. And so I spoke to leadership and I said, look, guys, we need to, I, I suggest we highlight individuals in our network that are doing this great work and highlight what we're doing too. And so, you know, the, nat- the the conversation naturally progressed to a podcast. And so we launched the podcast last year, September. Uh, like you mentioned, I'm the host. I get the, the pleasure of being the host. And I'll tell you what the podcast started as and what it's evolved into. So initially, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we have a strong developer community and we have a st- strong investment community. And we thought that'll be a good audience to start with. And so I started interviewing individuals and I started hearing their stories. And it was amazing. You know, you hear about people that have been working in this field for decades and no one's ever asked them, like, what are you doing? Tell us about it. And the question that I like to ask during the show that is really the crux of our conversation on the podcast is the why behind what you do, what drives you, what motivates you. You know, you've decided to invest your time, your energy, your talents into building this company or building this fund or exploring this technology. Why? And time and time again, I kept hearing, you know, I'm doing it for legacy reasons, doing it for my children, doing it for the planet. And that also seeded the idea of the name of the podcast is bigger than us because everyone was doing it for a reason that was bigger than them. No, you know, no hundred episodes almost soon. And no one said, you know, I'm only doing it for the money, only for me. No one said that yet. <laughs> it it's just beautiful to to hear people doing this kind of work. And so I said, guys, we, you know, let's broaden our audience. And so, you know, we've had entrepreneurs on, we've had um, VPs or directors of large public companies. We've had a whole range of individuals that are doing great work. Most recently I had the pleasure of, uh, you know, speaking to the VP of sustainability at Lyft, for example, you know, global company and hearing his story and hearing his, hearing his why. And so as you know, leadership and I spoke more and more about it, we thought, What else can we do with this? And so we've actually or actually positioning Nexus BTU bigger than us as not only a podcast, but 
for the next generation or even people right now, if they're looking for an opportunity to engage in what we call the sustainability sector, the renewable energy sector, the climate change sector, what I've essentially you know, offered them in these, let's say, 100 episodes is a smorgasbord or a buffet, if you will, of entry points. So, for example, let's say you or you know someone in college right now, we've got many college students listening in on our show now, are looking to enter, let's say they're studying environmental sciences, but they're not sure from an entry point do they want to go into the money side, the building side, the technology side? Where do they want to enter? We're giving them an opportunity to listen to the show, find episodes that perhaps suit their interest, and consider those as entry points. Now, let's answer the other question regarding connection. Again, you know me and my my habit or my belief in connecting people. What's happened subsequently is that I've had guests on the show that have said, hey, you know, I heard so-and-so on show number seven would you mind making an introduction? That's played beautifully in what I enjoy doing. Again, being the nexus, being able to either connect guests to each other, which I've done quite a few times. Also, occasionally I get an inbound email saying, hey, Raj, you know, you had this guest on. We'd like to learn more about the company. Would you mind connecting me to the CEO? So obviously with permission granted, I asked the CEO if I can make the connection. So slowly but surely, these last, I would say, three to four months, I've seen quite a significant increase in the number of introductions that I'm able to make both within the listenership and from outside going coming back into the to the guests just because of the podcast. It's a it's a tool that allows you to just do more of what you do naturally, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It just yeah. it just helps amplify who I am. And Raj, quick question there, man. You know, a lot of of people that will be listening to this, um, they're gonna ask, well, how has that impacted your business? Have you seen an uptick in in the return of the value that you're creating and the return of the value that you're putting out. Uh, how does that look for you after putting out nearly 100 episodes? You know, Jonathan, that's a really good question. And so I can tell you in the last three months, we've seen significant inbound interest from people that have discovered us through the podcast. I wow. can even share that we've got some direct leads for work. Now, I mentioned earlier that our projects are large projects. They're significant projects. So you could just imagine what an inbound lead is worth to the company for the kind of projects that we work on. And then there's also what I call the knock-on effect, meaning that these podcasts are almost all evergreen. And so what happens is that people will come in and listen to one or two, then they'll go back and listen to other episodes. and highlights our expertise, it all comes back to Nexus PMG. Bigger Than Us is a Nexus PMG production. And so the podcast, if you will, and we can perhaps talk about this too, the podcast, if you will, creates what I would call a halo effect for the company. And what I mean by that is that we set out on the foot of doing good in the world, meaning that we wanted to highlight individuals and provide value to these companies and individuals. What has happened is that that has essentially brought value back to us. There's even been a few funds that we've spoken to recently, and they've come back and said, yes, we've heard your podcast. We've heard about you in the podcast. How's this podcast thing working? So to speak directly to your question, Jonathan, we have definitely in the last few months seen significant inbound interest. um, And there's been only one so far, but we've actually had one inbound cold lead emailed into us because somebody heard it from us on the podcast. So again, you know, depending on the company you have and the projects you're doing, you can measure leads in different ways. But for us, just that recognition within the industry, because again, the thing that I want to really drive home here is that we are in a very niche industry. So yes. yep. it, that really helps too, because I can tell you that from my knowledge and also the leadership's knowledge, there aren't really any other companies in this space that are doing what we're doing. And mm. again, driving home the fact that we didn't, start the podcast to drive revenue or to drive ROI. And Jason and I have been back and forth this conversation quite a bit because um, although I understand that you both gentlemen are businessmen and you might have a lot of business people listening to this, Jason knows that I do a lot of things in life and I don't look for the ROI on it. I think there are other kinds of ROI that you can look for when you're investing your time and your resources. Yeah. And then there's even, of course, even more nuanced than that, right? The, and I think, I think this podcast falls into that, which is, you know, direct and indirect ROI. Um, and I, I think it's really interesting too, that, you know, the efforts 
even without that, hey, um, you know, direct ask, that call to action, that ad, if you will, that some podcasts may have for their company that's doing them, even without all of that, it's still leading to some direct ROI, you know, direct uh, leads coming in and things like that. Um, and certainly, I know, Raj, for, for you and I, and, and, and certainly with Jonathan, that's why we connected the way we did. Uh, that connection and that network just to link up is everything. What's the, the, the next phase of, of Nexus and how is your role there in the show kind of playing a part of, of that? So perfect timing. We are actually releasing a comic strip. It's landing today. Oh, August 30, fantastic. August 31st. Uh, it's, the bigger cool. than us com it's the Bigger Than Us comic strip and it's directed spe specifically towards children. And so we jokingly talk about, you know, our Nexus media empire. <laughs> and so the, we're, we're the bigger than us next the bigger than us media empire and so the comic strip is part of that we are also looking to engage you know later in the year in coloring books for children again our goal with the podcast is to really be able to educate um you know whether, whether it's the next generation of innovators engineers and also like i mentioned earlier with college students you know people that are considering entering their in industry um over summer, we were actually hiring during the pandemic, we were hiring engineers and I reached out to UTD and SMU and had conversations with them regarding engineering students, you know, and using the Bigger Than Us platform to perhaps, you know, have a talent pipeline too. Because as these companies, what we're finding with these younger engineers is that they want to go to work for companies that have a purpose mm -hmm. and, per you know, companies that are mission driven. And we're finding that what we're doing is bigger than us is really resonating well with college students that are perhaps on the cusp of graduating and thinking what they want to do with the rest of their lives. So whether it's the Gen Z or millennial generations, you know, people that are asking, you know, what's in it for me and how can I contribute back? We're seeing that that part of it also developed too. So jokingly, we talk about the bigger than us being our media empire, but our, our reasons are, are, you know, educate, inform, help, um, whatever we can do to, you know, strengthen our community that's around us. So that that's the longer goal for BTU. And like we said, we're putting our money where our mouth is now by launching this comic strip. Every one of those shows that congruency, right? It's one thing to put a page up on your site that says, hey, we care. It's another thing when you have a hundred episodes, a book, a this and that, or examples of how you care and how you've manifested that caring into, into projects. Um, it's essentially proof points, right? And it's it's huge. Absolutely. Well, Raj, this has been this has been fantastic. Um, I want to hit rapid fire questions here, just a couple for you. That we like to wrap up with here. Um, before we do, tell us the best way to to connect with you and uh, with Nexus. Nexuspmg.com, easy as can be. You can always email me Raj at rajdaniels.com. dot um, That's my personal email. Feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to connect. All right, a couple of rapid fire questions. One of the quick fire questions I wanted to ask is, you know, uh, the title of this is, is strategy in action. Tell us about a recent strategy that you've come up with uh, and taken action on, as we know that's the important part as well. Um, and what the, what was the result of that? You know, strategy in action. The action is for results, and. I'm going to walk you through something that happened to me here recently. Again, you know, Jason and I have a long relationship, so he knows I jokingly say I have a, um, I have a sloth mentality. I just keep working through things. Um, I'll, I'll, so I published a book back in 2017, and it's done relatively well. Never really pushed it much. Last year, end of last year, I thought to myself, you know, I'd like to get this book out there more. And so I put a few in different areas. Um, I put one at my, I put two copies at my, chiropractor's office and I'm getting back to your story or your question so don't worry so I put two at my chiropractor's office and this was back in January of this year and about a month a month and a half later someone reached out to me on Twitter and said hey Raj I found your book at you know this chiropractor's office and I would like to talk to you about it so I gave them my email address and the gentleman emailed me and said I want to buy 10 copies of your book I said fine fair enough and so we met for coffee he lived here locally where I live in Dallas and he bought 10 copies of my book and he said, you know, um, 
I'm from South America, and I think your book would do really well if it was translated into Spanish. I'm a listener to the universe kind of guy. I look for serendipity in my life. And so I said, you really think so, Carlos? And he said, yeah, I think it'll do really well in Spanish. I said, okay, fair enough. And so I listened, I went away, and then I thought to myself, okay, now what's the strategy to create my book into Spanish? You know, sure, there's translation companies I can go out, you know, go out there and hire, but what do I want to do? So I laid out a few steps myself. Okay, identify a translator, fine, fair enough. Identify a distributor, fine, fair enough. These are all high-level strategic things that I had to do. And then I took action in each one of those. So luckily, going back to networking, I had someone in my network that I've known for 20 years who does translation work for large companies. Now, she does legal documents and legal work for large companies in translation. Had coffee with her. Her name is Laura. I said, Laura, this is a conversation I had recently. Would you be willing to help with the project like this? She said, I haven't seen your book. Gave her a copy of my book. She came back, I think it was three or four days later, and she said, I love the idea of doing this. My team is just so excited because it gets them away from just doing you know, legal work, and they really love your book too. So her and I had a follow-up conversation, and I said, look, I don't know anything about the South American market. I know you know, you know, you're, you have Mexican heritage. You tell me the best way to do this. So we sat down, we negotiated a deal together. She took the book. She translated the entire book into Spanish. And right now, as we speak, the final edited version for the Spanish book is being completed. Cover is already done, and it should be out on Amazon here within the next two or three weeks. So I'm going to roll back to February and... I couldn't tell you in February when the book was going to be done. I couldn't give you an endpoint as far as, okay, my goal is to have it done by September or August. For me, and I understand goal setting, and I understand deadlines, and I understand time crunches or setting specific timings for doing things as perhaps a way of an accountability, but I feel like as a society, we've tried to put everyone in this box where if you don't accomplish something within a certain time frame, then you've either failed or you should give up. And my viewpoint is quite opposite of that because what I tell people is that, look, you see your, your show is called Strategy and Action. When you take action, it's that butterfly effect, right? Something is happening somewhere. You may not be able to see it yet. For those of you who know the story about bamboo and how bamboo grows, all of a sudden it grows to be 40 feet after being in the ground for, what, 18 months? You can't see it growing? We yep. as human beings are the same way in that every action is going to have an effect. Now, we've been put into this, I guess, this situation here or this thinking, this way of thinking about everything should come out when we say it's going to come out. So August 31st, if I don't do it by then, I should give up or I failed some way. That's the part I think that really holds people back or doesn't empower people to continue pursuing their goal because I don't know who said it, but how long should it take? It should take as long as it takes. Now, I know it, that can be hard to you know, live with, with some people, some people that are really driven by time. But I'll give you a very good example of a recent conversation I had. There's a new stock ex exchange coming out. It's going to be called the Long-Term Stock Exchange. And it's speaking to companies that have longer visions than just quarterly reporting. You know, They can have a, a five-year or 10-year, seven-year vision. They get to self-set their visions but they get to engage, engage in longer-term strategies, which I think have a better long-term effect than whether it's a short-term thinking. So going back to your question exactly, you know, having a strategy is great. Taking action is really good. Watching results along the way, check marking, seeing that you're making progress without comparing your progress to someone else's progress, which is really important. Essentially, you're competing with yourself, no one else. I think that is the last part of that equation is that take the action, compare it today to yesterday, and then continue moving forward with your head down, especially if it's something really important to you, so whatever that might be. Words of wisdom from Raj Daniels. Mm. Per usual, I will say, I will add in there. <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much for your perspective today, Raj. Thanks for your friendship. Thanks for being on episode one here of the show, and we will talk to you soon. Thank you, guys. I'll come back for episode number 100. Nice. Awesome, man. We'll do it. Thanks for listening. You've learned what's working on the front lines of business. Now it's time to get to work. 
Apply to the Strategy and Action Group on Facebook to learn more and for a chance to connect with the guests on this show. Join us next time for Strategy and Action.